I'll be open with you. I connect with the soul energy of a human person. So when I'm talking to an individual like yourself or maybe you know one of the 500 people in the room, I'm looking at eyes. I'm I'm, I'm entering the, the seat of the soul. You know this 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 the doorway to the soul, which is the conversation. So I'm seeing and feeling and calibrating constantly with God's gift. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Inspired By, with me, your host, Manjit Nija. I'm so glad you've joined me again this week. Um, and as you know, this little series of um, interviews that I'm doing, well, more like chats and conversations, really, um, that I'm doing are um, with people who I've been inspired by over the years, months, weeks, could even been yesterday. So it's just to have that conversation and see, actually, are you inspired by them? Can they pass any wisdom or anything on to you which you may well find useful. So this week, I've got an amazing guest for you. This very first episode is very special to me because um, somebody who's inspired me in so many ways. Uh, you may have heard of him. His name is Suki, Suki Wahewala. Suki and I met, I don't know, five, maybe six years ago now. And there's a funny story about how we met, which I'll tell you a little bit later. Um, you've heard so much, you may have heard so much about Suki. You can look him up on Google, you can go to his YouTube channel, go to Instagram, go to, he's everywhere. And Suki is, um, he's a business mentor, he's a business investor, um, property investor, whatever, he's, he's got his fingers in lots of pies or in the Indian way of saying it, in lots of Lundus. And those of you who are Indian, you kind of get that. Lundu is a sweet. Um, so he's got his fingers in lots of Lundus all over the place. Somebody actually said that, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, I don't, it, it kind of stuck in my head. Um, so Suki is an amazing guy. Um, he's, uh, like I said, he's a fantastic businessman, multimillionaire, retired quite early. All this stuff is out there in the ether, but that's not the person I'm going to be introducing you to. So what I'd like to do just for a moment, I'm going to bring Suki in the conversation um, so he can say hello to you before we really get started. Hi, Suki. How are you? Hello, Manjeet. Hello, everybody on this particular show inspired by. I am truly, truly humbled. Um, by your loving introduction there and also to be on this show to share openly. Thank you. Um, do you know what? I've, I really want to tell people how we really met because every time I do, it makes me smile. I know it makes you smile. Um, <laughs> that's going to be that's going to be quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is one of those stories. So I met Suki, as I said, a few years back and um, it was at um, one of these... The best. Self that was it, the best you. Thanks for reminding me. It was at the best you, and it was at um, Olympia or wherever it was. Excel. So, yeah, so I was walking around this place. There was lots of these, um, you know, where you can go and get books and book on the seminars, how to improve yourself, build your business. It's all about self-development. And, and as you know by now, I'm, I'm, I love self-development and self-mastery. So I went along to this, this place and I thought, well, let me see what it's all about. And I kept walking around, I kept walking around, I kept walking past this, this one stand. And it's called BBR. And it was Indian people. And I was like, oh, Indian people, what do they know? They're going to be fly by nose. So I kept walking around and I kept ending up back there. So I thought, okay, somebody is trying to tell me something here. There's a message that's trying to get through to me. So but I didn't actually go and talk to Suki then. I went to the only non Asian person there, and that was Gary. Gary Setterfield has also become a dear friend of mine as well. <laughs> so, so I thought, let me go and talk to let me go and talk to the non-Asian person. And so, what did Gary do, Suki? Gary, uh, from my memory, first things first, uh, it was it was it was quite funny to see you go past again and again and again <laughs> on the principle that I could he hear the fact that you didn't want to touch base and talk to another Asian. Uh, I thought, you know, what are these uh, fly by night characters? And the BBR stands for the business boardroom. Uh, when you did connect with Gary, I already clocked it in the corner of my eye. Um, and, and you were talking to him about stuff and he, he intentively listened to you. Uh, that was a guarantee because that's the type of guy he is. He's one of our head seniors and a business partner in business boardroom as well. He, after managing the conversation with you and after discussing something with you, he said, <laughs> to speak to Suki. And I was like, oh, really? So anyway, I went over to talk to Suki and do you know what? It was like I was talking with an old friend. It's like we'd always known each other. And we didn't actually talk about business at all. 
even though the business boardroom was there to help people to join, to grow their business, to have Suki as a business mentor, to be part of the Inspired Tribe. You know, that's what it was all about. But we didn't connect on that level. We connected more on a, on a personal and more on a spiritual level because of, we're from the same faith. So we had a conversation around that. And do you know what? Not once did Suki ever say to me, you need to be part of BBR, you need to be part of this. We just got to know each other as friends. And then over time, my moment came, I had a shift. My moment came and it was, what do I do now? You know, I deliver training and I love delivering training, service management training and self-development coaching. I love all of that. You know, having had all the hands-on experience myself over the years, I was then out as an independent. Like, okay, so now what? I know there's more to me, but where, what do I do with this? Where do I take this? How can I grow it? So there's only one person I was going to turn to, and that was Suki. And I've actually got a – I call Suki my little big brother. He's, <laughs> younger, he's younger than me, um, but he's older than me and wiser than me in, in so many ways. And we've got – we are more like brother and sister now. No doubt. No doubt at all. It's uh, directly from my heart as well. We've been – I think we're communicating uh, and I, I'm on this show because of you. Um, it's not one of the things that you want us to use as PR purposes, but it, you know, I'm a quite an authentic person. I'm very personable. Um, I believe anyway, and I'm, my integrity is very sharp. So when we're talking about each other and calling us as family, it truly is that way. Well, definitely because, you know, I mean, I know the room where you're sitting. I've been in there plenty of times, you know, you've opened your doors to me. You've welcomed me into your family which actually leads me on to Suki the man, not Suki the businessman, Suki who's the father, the son, the, good, the great friend, the brother that he is. That's the person I really want to talk to because everybody else who interviews you, it's about Suki the businessman, Suki the entrepreneur. That's not where I want to get to. I want to get to dig beneath that and really understand the person underneath. And I'd, and I'd love for everybody who's watching this to really understand who you are or what makes you you. So are you ready to open up? Oh, goodness me. You've, you've just put a shiver in my spine. Thinking, <laughs> uh-huh, I've got to turn around and uh, I don't know what's going to come my way. You know, this is quite impromptu. So let's do it. Let's do it. Indeed, anything for you. Oh, bless you. Thank you. So as I said, you know, Suki's like my brother. You know, so those of you that's tuning in, we're talking, this is um, episode one and of Inspired By. And this week is inspired by Suki Vahivala who is a businessman and entrepreneur, and you can find out so much about him. What we're just about to do is dig beneath the surface and find out about the person, not the persona that is, you'll see his picture here, there and everywhere in this magazine, in Forbes magazine and, and so on. That's not the person we're going to talk to. We're going to talk to the man who's at home. He's a family man with his children, a man who's really spiritual as well which is where we kind of connected straight away was from, from that kind of aspect. I mean, your family's amazing. You know, Thank your you. kids are like my own nieces and nephews. I've met your dad. Unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to meet your mom. Um, she passed away before I had, uh, you know, had a chance to meet her. Right. Um, but she's, she's been a, um, a presence in every meeting that you go to. Certainly the meetings I've been in, I can kind of feel like she's guiding you and, and, and you know, taking you along your journey. Would you say that's correct? Manjeet, you just touched something that's, that's so important to all of us because we've all got to understand at some stage where we're going to go after we're not here physically anymore. I have a very strong belief that uh, you know, we're a celestial light. We understand this within the Sikh faith, I, um, just opening it up in the conversation, um, where we all have the equal light within ourselves. The light itself is eternal, which is AKA the soul or whatever you would like to say. Um, it's just a transition. My grandma used to say to my father, um, I said, son, I'm just going to change my clothes. You know, and we are talking about my mum passing in 2018. I think it was now uh, December, not think I know. Um, and she basically passed into the light uh, on the 1st of December. That's just the way it was. And that's, that's life. We, we, the light is eternal. So we can obviously tap into that energy whenever we require and need to. So it's really, really lovely to see that you understand that that, that, that uh, warmth, maternal energy is present in our sessions and our, our time together. Yeah, it is. And, and I certainly know, know it's there, as I said. 
you know, one of the things that I find so inspiring about you, the person, is that no matter where you are, you could be in a room full of a thousand people. Or it could be five people, but actually it feels like you're talking to each individual. The yeah. conversations, you, you could be having a conversation with somebody who's five seats away from me. I feel like you're talking to me. I mean, how is that possible? How do you actually do that? How, I, what, is it a trick? <laughs> you know, yeah. you're, are you a magician? How, how is it possible that you can actually connect with so many people just by talking to one person? Um, do you know, Firstly, what I'm really driven by just by that conversation is how you've actually picked that up. The testimonials at the end of every event, every training and education, even the masterminds, it's very much very clear and evident that we we connect to we, we can either connect consciously or unconsciously. And and this is not about training and stuff, this is about me. So what I do is it's, it's, it's probably another another series we can talk another episode talk about more detail but i'll be open with you i connect with the soul energy of a human person so when i'm talking to an individual like yourself or maybe you know one of the 500 people in the room i'm looking at eyes i'm i'm, I'm entering the, the seat of the soul you know this 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 the doorway to the soul which is the conversation so i'm seeing and feeling and calibrating constantly with god's gift and when i use the word i please understand everybody that um, I have a very strong belief uh, about whatever I am within me is not mine. Whatever I have, whatever I have within me is the ethers, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the, I'm just a conduit to currently put it into a framework that maybe could be understood by somebody. So in context, I'm just listening to everybody and I'm listening to all of them. And my, I seem to have been gifted with, with uh, blessings an opportunity or the ability to truly listen to somebody and understand where they're coming from and then also store and remember so that when I'm talking to people, there's no cell. I'm not in that space. I'm just in the service space. I'm in the space of love. Um, you know, there is nothing else but love. That's the only way to connect into the divine. So if I'm listening to somebody and they've asked a question, I've answered it for them, but I've got them stored in, in wherever their position is. So if somebody else asks something else, or if I'm sharing something, I will just make eye contact with the person that I was just talking to over there, there, there. So they can all understand this was for you, by the way, and this was for you as well, without yeah. me having to say, this is for you. And, and it's, a, it's a genuine open, what we classify as a communal rapport mm. transfer. So mm. this is something that I talk about as well, but back to you. Yeah, yeah it, it is. I mean, I've been in, in plenty of, of your training sessions and walked away with so much information and I sometimes I've walked away like with a head full of stuff I was like okay I've got to go home now and I'm going to do something with this I don't know what I'm going to do it's usually pen to paper because one of the things that I've picked up with being with you is get it out of your head write yes. it all down you know and and I'm glad to say and honored to say that I'm probably one of the few accredited certified disc and dft trainers you know, that's come out from the courses that, that I've done with you. And now I've incorporated that into the self-development that, that I now go on and coach through my own purple method that, I, that I've developed myself. And those are two of the tools which, if you come on the courses with me, if you need that help, that's something that, I, that we can go through at a later date. You know, so there's so much information that you can get from Suki, not just in like an hour. I'm talking about purely five minute or even a two minute conversation with Suki that, he will transfer so much stuff over to you that you're going to be blown away with a lot of the things that he comes out with, everything that he comes out with. Bless you. Know? you. I hope it's not overwhelming. And I, I just, I just deliver content strategic, strategic, strategically as well as emotionally. Um, and I hope it's not overwhelming because don't forget that one of the things you just said there a moment is that the, the head is full. If you have one night's sleep, the brain, the soul, the, the, focus within your brain has such a beautiful way of what we call it um saving it into the correct files so that you can actually come back and and bring it up whenever you need it and you have to just trust that it's there because it really is you'll yeah. pick up some conscious learnings but mm. it's, it's a bit deeper than that yeah it is it is you know and i totally agree with you it's about knowing which compartment you need to file stuff away in and then being able to recall and unlocking each one of those compartments and 
you do that by surrounding yourself and being with people who already know how to do it. And this again, and this, as, again, through being with yourself and like with Gary and, you know, like Rav and Am and all the other people and JT, Trina, all these other people that, that we see on a regular basis as part of the business boardroom and the inspired tribe that, we, that we're part of. You know, it, it's, it's just the electricity that is within that group of people because we're all lifting each other. So when one person drops, we all help to lift that person up. Nobody ever gets left behind. It's a, um, it's a family, right? So yeah. it's the inspired tribe of, it's a family of inspiration. So what we've tried to do, um, and you, when, when you, just to clarify with everybody, so the inspired tribe is not a paid tribe. It's a, a metaphor for individuals who have connected with each other and that are there for each other. So what I find is when people are in business and in life, for example, it, it's, it kind of gets very lonely. And what we've done is we've created this, you know, a social Friday, on these days on Zoom, et cetera. But, uh, but it's, we're gonna continue that. We've got an inspired dinner club. We, we used to meet up every month. And obviously since the lockdown in Feb, we haven't met for the last three months now. Uh, we're seriously me- missing that. Hence why this is the Inspired Tribe. You don't have to pay to be a part of the Inspired Tribe. Just get involved. As long as you're getting involved in our environments, you know, feel free to, to note down on the subscribes down at the bottom there or in the comments how you feel that Manjeet or myself can actually help you. That'd be wonderful. One of my favorite um, inspired diners was actually the pizza making. That, that was, was fun, so wasn't it? Fun. That was that fun, was, wasn't it? Yes. That was so much fun. We all made, we went to Pizza Express who kindly allowed us to take over the a whole floor. And um, we made pizza. And then there was, there was judging of the best pizzas and so on. And it was, it, honestly, it, we had such a blast. And that's what it's all about is, is being with people who you can just be yourself with, um, you know, and, and Suki, like your children, speaking of being yourself, your children, if I was to speak to them, okay, about you, what would you, what would you think they're going to, especially Ranveer, right, your son, Ranveer's what do you think you. that he would bring back to me? What would you think he would say about you, about you know, about his dad? Oh, so oh, that's a great question. And this is very jovial. It's very free flow. Um, just for sharing, I, we have four beautiful children, my wife. Um, I am actually one of eight siblings. So I'm the youngest of my eight siblings. I have one older brother who's the second eldest of the family. And my eldest is a sister. And then there's five sisters and myself. So we're quite a sizable Victorian style family. Um, mum and dad, um, obviously, I, I, we lost mum in 2018. Dad's still with us. We have a, we, the, my, my own personal unit through this lockdown is four children, beautiful children, three daughters and a son, uh, my wife, myself, Avinda, and uh, uh, my father, Ranthir Singh Wahiwala. So, in context of you, that was a cheeky. Cheeky question. I don't know what you think. I just thought I'd throw that one over the fence when you were least expecting it. So I would suggest, I I think, I hope, um, he's 15 years old. It was only like two weeks ago. At the end of uh, April, he was 15. So I would suggest, I I, I would think that he would think um, inspirationally of the actions that I do, how we connect with lots of people. I'll tell you something about him. Let's put it that way, because I, I'm not really sure what he would think about me because that'd be very self-centered and that's not me. I think what I think of him, as I do with all my children, if you want, I'll go through all of them for you. Yes, please. That'd be really good. If you go through all three of them, that'd be really good. Because I love them all equally. So That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, so let's start with Ranveer, which you mentioned. He's the third eldest um, or the second youngest, whichever you want to put it. He's number three. Um, and I have two beautiful daughters older than him, Harjot and Amanjot. Ranveer is his, my son's name. And the youngest uh, is Navjot, who's no longer young anymore. She's 12 going on to 18. Trust me. Um, <laughs> so with, with reference to Ranveer, um, if I was to describe him, uh, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, is what I'd say. He, uh, rightly or wrongly, you know, whether it's a short straw, um, if you put a beard on him, I don't think he'd look much different to me. He's, he's, uh, he's got the same sort of look framework and everybody else seems to think it's a good thing, but I, I'm not, I'm subjective to that. 
Um, and <laughs> he's not like you. Yeah, very, yeah, very he's, similar. He's, he's a mini. A, he's, he's a mini you, definitely. Mini me, yes, yeah, right. Yeah, he's he's a little taller than myself now, so he kind of is. Uh, you know, it's lovely to have a a very. Uh, what we call a mature conversation with the children. They're all beautiful kids and they're above and beyond their age, not because we're brilliant, because of their, they've connected to the inner light. And when you connect to the inner light within ourselves, the unconscious mind, the heart center, whatever you want to call it. And if you're aware of who you are, um, you start to beam who you are. Does that make sense? So that's it. So that mm -hmm. when, a, when a person becomes themselves, they shout wisdom. Yeah. So the children, don't act like they act like children. They play around. They trust me. They are, you know, we have a, a lot of Tom and Jerry moments with Nubjord, my youngest, and Ranveer. This is the kind of stuff I've never shown and shared in public. So I'm sharing. They 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 love each other and they can't do without each other. But they're constantly pranking each other or running some kind of fun conversation. So in story, um, when you talk to them in a in a formal environment like one of our trainings one of my educations or qualifications or uh, in one of my social environments i'm very happy just to leave them because they're very self-independent and they have their own personality coming through i'm sure you'll verify that but they also communicate in a very mature manner navjod ranveer Havjordan, they've been they've been entering our educational trainings which were for the world which we, we, we've been having them internally and my my children arrive at some business boardroom uh, sessions on a monthly basis. And they turn up definitely at the inspired business workshops, which are evenings on Wednesdays and stuff. So they turn up and, and they surprise me. They surprise me, they blow my brain. I'm talking to adults in the room and we, we go through rhetoric uh, updates. Do you already know when you, you were there, you go through all these, where people say, what, what have you learned from this section or and this particular point and has that chunk helped you? Um, and their feedback is, it's, it's, it's adult. It's like, mm -hmm. it's so mature. They're way beyond their years and, and they say things. And all I see, and you were one of them in one of, one of them, which I've got a visualization. Yeah. They'll just say something like, um, they'll say something that everybody's been feeling, but not been able to articulate. And everyone just goes, Oh my God, that's exactly what's happening. So yeah. I would say that very beautiful people, very beautiful children, the older two are, um, they're kind of like, uh, most of the children are around about four years apart, except for the younger two. So, so they've got a maturity between each other. Uh, what, we've, what we've managed to develop within them is a, a respect factor for their elders. But what really endears me is how they look after my wife, uh, myself, with a loving, loving uh, touch. Mm. And all of us dote on my father and we did with my mum as well. So both my parents were cool. They lived with me. Yeah. Um, I haven't shared that much in the public arena. And so they, they lived with me and we're a part, we were a unit. Um, and my father is now a unit with us as well. Um, I'm, I'm so blessed that my other siblings accepted the fact that my father was living in, in, I was the last one out of the home in essence. So he lives with myself in this home. Yeah. I mean, you've touched on your wife there. And there is that saying, you know, behind every great man is an, is an amazing, amazing woman. And I truly believe that, you know, your wife is exactly that. She's the, the quiet support in the background that holds the whole of your family together. And without her being there, Suki couldn't do what Suki does. No doubt. Um, do you know... Manjit, Manjit, oh goodness me, it's taking, it takes me, it takes me to somewhere else, Manjit, with that conversation, because there is a, there's people out there who say somebody completes them, but she completes me, you know, but when the, she's just a, the, the most loving person there is. Um, and it, it's kind of like symbiotic where she, where she lift, leaves off, I'll pick up where I leave off, she'll pick up. So it's very in flow. Her nature is beautiful. What really, really works is how we, we truly love everybody within the family. Mm. Um, and, and I'm going to go deep into this conversation, if you don't mind. It's also the fact that she intellectually stimulates conversation. We have such a great conversation, deep. She's a, a born sociologist. Yeah. And every single aspect of what I'm sharing with you is, is real and true. 
she's currently doing her masters at Cambridge and we're very proud of that as well considering you know she decided that we would have our children first and then we'd, we'd consider uh, where she wanted to go she runs a portfolio of properties she also gets involved in other aspects in the family she's definitely one of the major carers my father um, everybody if they want to want to find something out about my father's journey it's going to be through the hub of my wife, Parvinda, and myself uh, being her husband. So we know a lot about this, about every child. Mm. And what we've got is a very open, vulnerable connection with each other. There's no pretenses. I, we don't have to be somebody. Um, and we'll just share openly within a loving conversation. So nobody in the family has to have the answer. That's the truth. Yeah. Because that yeah. just breeds ego. And so that's what we're not doing. So Parvinda, definitely, she's my stimulus. She... she mm makes everything worth it and, and i'm going to ask each and every one of you as well all of our mentees will do the same as well so this, this is the first time i'm sharing this kind of stuff and um, indeed it's all your fault <laughs> I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll hold my hands up to that one yeah, yeah she's she the way that she is because she's a very it's, it would be easy to misjudge her because she's a quiet unassuming kind of person i've met her so many times and you know we we've hit it off we've had some amazing conversations the two of us and each time I've received one of her warm hugs, um, she gives the most amazing hugs. And you know I'm a hugger anyway, so yeah, she gives yeah. the most amazing hugs. And each time I've walked away from your house, you know, when I'm, she's usually the one who opens the door to me. Make sure I have my herbal teas, because she knows I like my herbal teas when I come around. You know, make sure I'm comfortable. Sits and talks to me until, you're, until you come in so we can get on and, and talk about whatever business aspect we need to talk about that day. Um, and then she always says goodbye to me. You yes. know, she is that, that, that quiet person, but without that quiet person in the background, things would start to kind of like creak and, and, and she's, you know, uh, if like I could that. just uh, clarify that she's a, uh, she's quite a, uh, uh, quite a light. She's, she's, uh, she's, she's very calm within herself, but she's got mm -hmm. a super eye energy, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know what I'm talking about with the influencer yeah. energy. So give her, give her a stage. She'll be there. She'll go through a soft session. She's actually not so quiet. Um, in her own reality um if we're out you know she's probably the most convivial individual um she's always got this inner volition within her you know which is basically her energy and she's always on a mission so very very endearing without a doubt so in that particular moment what suits was relevant is to be the 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 s stability motherly love mm. uh, but she's feisty in the sense of she's got this grit about her. She's very competitive. She wants to be in certain arenas. Um, and, and boy, does she defend her thoughts and her beliefs of where she's going. She's a true academic and she mm. just loves um, that kind of uh, enrichment, uh, which, which is her, her soul time is yeah. just enriching her, her thoughts and processes. So mm. She's got this knack of connecting with mm. humans. Uh, in the sense of people who are super uh, uh, in the world of sociology, which is her field. In the world of sociology, there's people who are super influential world orders. And she'll be in the room listening mm. to a lecture. The next thing you know, she's got their mobile number. She's communicated with them. She's starting to email them. And she's, they're mentoring her mm. uh, academically from their heart. So she's, mm. she's, she's just so honest. Yeah. We she have is. a little joke within the family. She can't lie. <laughs> she, she can't. And it's, it's all filters within everybody. We all have a fun and joke about it. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, for those of you just joining in, you've missed so far just an amazing, amazing conversation uh, with Suki Waiwala. Um, so you're going to have to go back to the beginning to watch all of this and, and find out why we're talking about his wife. Because um, this is not a conversation that Suki normally has. He's not normally asked the questions that I've been asking him. And I'm honoured that I'm able to ask these questions because, as I said, he's my little big brother. So, you know, he's got to answer these questions because I'm his sister at the end of the day. So we're going to have these conversations. So, you know, Suki, we, we've talked so much about different members of your family. You know, then there's the, the one who influenced you the most. You know, there's, there's your dad who I know you adore and we all adore your dad because he's amazing. I remember coming to your house the first time I came and I met your dad and he blessed me, you know, as, as in, in our culture, you know, with his hand on my head yeah. and gave me a blessing. And I've had some wonderful conversations with him as well. 
Well, for my memory, um, when you did come around the house, uh, it, was, it was sad it was during that period of time, and this is when we really understand who's, who's close to you, who's not, uh, period of time through the funeral period and the week. Um, you were sitting there quietly with myself. My father walked into the room, and kind of you just attracted to his aura immediately. The next thing I uh, saw is you just get up, walk over, meet my father, um, and you just sat at his feet and... I lost you for an hour and a half. I don't know where the time went. I said, do you know what? I'm just going to leave you guys. So I got up and left the room. And for me, it was very endearing, very, very endearing. So was, uh, I'll is- never forget that day. I will never forget that day because I sat there. And I just simply asked Uncle G, you know, tell me some stories about yourself and, and Auntie G so that I can get to know her through his eyes. And it was amazing, the thing. And he passed on so much wisdom to me, which I then brought home with me and then incorporated into my life with my relationship with my husband. So yeah. sorry I interrupted you there. So no, I just share that little that, that, that just has that aura. And uh, he is a very stable individual who understands where he's going. Bless them, they're in their 80s now. Um, but he's like an encyclopedia of the Sikh Holy Scriptures, which is the Gurbani. And it just filters out of him as that there's just, it's a gift. It just keeps, he relates any problem and challenge you've got. He knows the part of the Gurbani, which uh, the Holy Scriptures that can actually assist you and give you a framework immediately. He's just like this encyclopedia. And some people said to me once or twice that it, uh, you know, you've always got an answer for this and somehow you always create the solution or if you're asking about the scriptures and, and you always manage to make it very simple to understand, well, I get it from him. So he is the genuine influence in my life there. But on another token, if I, if you asked me, if I split myself up into percentiles and percentages and said, how much of me is influenced? Who's my biggest influencer? Um, Uh, uh, undoubtedly it was my mother and I've rarely shared this in public arena so you know we've had plenty of times when I've shared this kind of conversation with us internally so this is very uncomfortable but comfortable at the same time (laughs) stretch it was my mum mum I think I was every single thing from my eating habits from my walking habits the orderly habits the structure the strategy the fun the endearment the I'll do it for you, no worries. All those sort of energies have all come from my my mum. And uh, if I was to put a percentage on it, I'd say 70% as high as that is actually my mother was my influencer. She was also, don't forget, a a business owner and runner. She ran a retail clothes store and a hardware store for 16 and a half years whilst bringing up, at that time, before my birth, for beautiful children and maintaining and being the primary carer for my grandmother, my father's mum. And on top of that, being an impeccable wife and gelling all of it together. Uh, Again, a complete pocket rocket, beautiful person, Gurmeet Gaur Wahiwala, Um, only slight by five foot, not a big, big energy, not a big physical energy but uh, my god was it was was her energy um with us all all of our all of my parents all of my sorry all of my siblings have all been influenced by her um no doubt but i have to say that i feel that i've got a lot of her in myself in the way i assess things and move things and have the let's do this type attitude then my father also is a very strong element he's a super d should he's got this he's, he's very compassionate but you can't stop him from doing something he's just going to get it done you know whether it's one day in the morning it doesn't make a difference he'll just wake up and it's a sunday and all stuck in the grass and i've been embedded you know i've been brought up by my mum that your father's outside you know do you want to leave him on his own getting his uh, cut in the grass you know don't you think you should be by his side so these beautiful influences that were in my brain which most people probably call maybe manipulations or whatever no they're not for me they were in they were foundational padstones so then i couldn't sit and watch television or listen to music or do something else or go for a bike ride when my father was cutting the lawn so i'd have to go and help him this one thing my mum knew what she was doing there's one thing there's that one element of not leaving your parent alone at home to do something and her as well, by the way, not leaving her to do things on her own, has allowed me and gifted me time with elders, with senior people, wisdom, Mm -hmm. drop-downs. I think I was eight years old 
when I realized what a load bearing wall is in a property. So that's, most people that's think quite young to, to understand what I don't, I'm probably eight years old. I don't even know what I was doing at eight years old. Certainly not learning about load bearing walls. Yeah, because I'd walk in a place with my father, just talking about Hanadisi, my father, and I'd walk into the place and my dad's already visualized he's a property tycoon. So he would, he would visualize a property as purchased. And then he would say, we're going to take this wall out, this wall out, turn it into two flats or whatever he was, his vision was at the time. And he could see this without having to pen it down. And he would also know what a load bearing wall. A load bearing wall is when you've got a wall upstairs that sits on another wall downstairs. So he would always, in, he was always, always, mentor the process that he was going through. He wouldn't just do it. He would say, the reason why I've done this is we can't take this wall out because of this. And I think it was 1977, 78, something of that sort of time frame when we moved into my, for me, it was my second home, but I was three years old when I moved from my very first house. Um, and he, 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 my father had bought two semi-detached properties and he was basically amalgamating into one by taking all the central partitions out. So that's when I realized there was an upstairs and a downstairs that were actually on top of each other. Because as a child, have a little bit of a giggle about this. Most of us, we know there's an upstairs, downstairs, but as a child, you don't really put them on top of each other. It's like, it's just another level of the same. The spatial uh, has. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I have to agree with that because I can't. Yeah, you see little kids running up and they're going upstairs, downstairs, but they don't actually question it. Well, why do we have an upstairs? How does upstairs stay upstairs? That's why they jump on beds and they make noises and light shades jump and move around. And then you have to go upstairs, can you stop jumping because the, the light shades are moving downstairs? And they don't even know what you're talking about. They don't <laughs> understand how them jumping up and down upstairs is actually relating to a light lampshade vibrating downstairs. So those sort of things. Um, so, so what happened is my father showed me, because he, he took a wall, they're taken the wall out and created the doorway between the two buildings upstairs. Um, and I was just walking with him because I'd, I'd literally, I'd so blessed to be a chaperoned. I was just a protege all the way through his life. And he'd be walking above and looking above this product and he'd say to himself, stand back, but stay there, son. Um, that's, there's a hole here. And I'd be going, Oh, right. There's a hole. Here. So looking. And he said, do you know what this is? And I'd, no, so, what, 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 three, five, six years old, something like that, five, six years old. And he said, that's downstairs and we're directly upstairs and we're going to, we're, we're closing this off so people don't fall through there. And I, I had no understanding of what that meant. I was looking through this, looking through this gap and I could clearly see downstairs. This obviously had all been propped up properly. I could clearly see downstairs. Um, sorry, I'm going off track, but I'm just giving you some real information I've not shared. Um, but I knew that it was something to do with downstairs and upstairs. That's why when I was about eight years old, when he said to me, there's a load bearing. You remember when I showed you the gap? It all sort of sunk into my head. And this is part, part of the reason why I've always been influenced with property and loved it so much and uh, with, with gratitude. So I just want to go back to your mom a little bit more, just a little bit more about your mom, the person, sure. you know, the, the mother, the wife, the the matriarch of the family. You know, I know having, you know, been part of, of, of that time frame in your life when I came to your house that day, you know, how many people were coming to pay their respects for your mom? You know, that it, she was obviously well loved in the community. Mm. So, you know, the, what legacy has she left? What mark has she left on, on your family and the extended family and, and, you know, beyond your actual your family to the to the wider world. Manjit, this is the first time I'm going to talk about this ever uh, in a public arena. Um, when mum passed away, um, a part of all of us disappeared with her. She's, she had the most wonderful um, love and heart that was never ending. Does that make sense? Each and every one of us, all of my siblings, every one of us, we pluck up the courage and we talk about my mum whenever we can, just to bring this into context. We're always interjecting um, stories and, and flow within the children, the next generation, so that they can have these stories to pass on to their children. Um, my father is just, he's just some kind of a unbelievable soul who's got this, we know he feels it, but he's got this grit that he talks about. And he's always there for everybody. 
So we, we do the same for my, for, for my father as well. But just to go back to context of what mum was like, you know, it's, this is not an arrogant conversation at all. But when I was sharing, one of the thoughts that came to my mind from my nephew, Karamdeep, my uh, sister Raji's son, he sent a, 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 had a conversation and sent it via WhatsApp during that week between my mum passing to the funeral. Uh, the funeral being 8th of December 2018 and, and her passing on the 1st. We, he had a discussion and he said, we will see, and his, his conversation is, we will see Babuji, which means grandma, through my father, Papaji, because they spent 65, 63, 64 years together. They became one. They knew each other. They had each other's antics. They would share the principles of what they were doing. And it was, they completed each other like Ravinda does myself. And so what he said was, was, was really touching to myself. So when I had the opportunity to share our thoughts on behalf of the siblings, not the grandchildren, the siblings at my mum's funeral at the crematorium, I felt very proud that I could represent my older siblings, my older siblings, and just share some thoughts. Of course, it was very emotional, but one of the key things we wanted to share is that that, that she lives as long as we remember her mm-hmm. and her vision and her love stays within us as long as we stick to her attributes and her, her shine and her, her philosophy and, and what we call protocol. You know, mm-hmm. if we remember mum, mum stays alive. If we share and, and talk about mum, mum stays alive within us. Mm-hmm. I'm talking alive. Of course, she's still alive, but she's within us now. So we have to, look in was to find that person. So a little bit about mum, she would always be the person who gave before she took, mm. um, not out of weakness, not at all. Very, very tough woman. Um, she, she just basically was there for everybody in every conversation. And do you know one, one thing gift that we all had Manjeet Kaur is she just knew everything about everybody. You know, you say something about myself and you say, it's okay, you just know, what somebody's going through in your on point. That's for my mum. Yeah. My mum. From the minute we first met, it's almost like you can read my mind. It's like, and you think, how do you know that? How can you, how do you, how do you understand me so well? And that's, that's for my mother. My mum's a natural intention. You couldn't lie to her. You'd sit in and you'd be maybe something on your brain or something in mind. And she'll say, son, what's, what's up? And you'd be, no, there's nothing wrong. I'm fine. Or my sister would say or something else. And she would know exactly that something's not right. And then she'd, she'd tune in and she'd, get, and she'd just tell you straight to your face. So that's the kind of person she was. Mm-hmm. And so what has she left within everybody else? She used to remember every single thing about every single member of the family. She was known for her, her spidered, structured, ordered mind and brain. Mm-hmm. If you put something somewhere, she would know where she put it. If she did something, she would have it on a list, a piece of paper, so somebody could find it. Um, and if she would bring, she'd bring everybody in a heart center uh, every single day, she'd go through all the siblings. She would not call me because I'd come home and speak to her, but she'd bring every sibling to see how their day has been. She would have an, a separate log, you know, like you said, the rapport of knowing everybody's process is yeah. that is the conversation where she would be on the phone with everybody and she would log all the stat, all the data and all the information. So when she would check in, if somebody's told her, she may have 30 to 40 phone calls a day. Um, and, but she would know that one of my sisters or my sister's daughter's sons got an interview or has got something to do on a specific day on that morning. And she'd remember the time she'd be on the phone. Don't forget, you'll be fine. This is what you're going to do. So she had this, she just knew everything. She had a finger on everybody's life pulse. That's what's one of the things that's, that's missing within our clan now mm-hmm. is because she was there for not just my siblings and our family, for, for her, her, my father's family, for her own extended family, mm-hmm. sisters, brothers, their children. Um, that's, that's what it was about. So there you are. So I, I know how much your mom meant to you and still means to you. So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing everything you just shared about your mom, because it isn't something you normally talk about openly. Most yeah, definitely we, not. And, yeah. uh, I thank you for allowing me to share it because it makes me feel better. 
it makes me feel that I've, uh, I'm, I'm being as honest as I possibly can, as I always am. Yes, that's one thing you'd always get from, from yourself is complete honesty, which is why I, I love our personal relationship, but then also our business relationship as well. You know, because you've inspired me, you've um, allowed me to go on my journey, you've gently guided me. There hasn't been a push or a shove in a particular direction. It's what I wanted to do. So, you know, thank you for I, all of that. I genuinely hope that we've been, uh, that I've always supported you, um, not just with emotions and structure and spiritualness, but with, mm-hmm. with cognitive understanding of what, what next to be done. And, and me being on the show means a lot to me personally, because I'm on your show. And this is actually, you made it very clear, Suki, it's not about your business side. I'm not interested. I'm going to be talking about your social personal. And that kind of put me on edge. I thought, oh, I'm going to share a lot of me here. But I've done it. And I've done it and I feel great about it. Well, we haven't quite finished, actually. There is one Oops. more little thing about me that I want, you, I would like you to share with everybody is tomorrow or tonight, whenever, could be your last breath. Yes. What is it? The, what's going to be your legacy? What, how, how are we going to remember you? What, what do you want to actually leave behind? As a DP... <laughs> well, you know me, I go deep dive. <laughs> I think every one of our mentees, students, and people I speak to, they've, everybody requires to know themselves. You should always know yourself. You should have an internal reflection. And you should also know how you adapt to other people. And you're a master of this now. I think uh, to give you an integrous answer, which is completely different to, I suppose, the technical side of things or the business conversation would be, I would love to be remembered. My legacy would be that somebody who truly connected my conscious brain with my unconscious brain, heart center, and allowed an individual to dip into their own light, uh, divine light, whichever universal light quantum light the collective consciousness or i've written a whole philosophy in the synagogue's method about the connected co- collective so about that collective consciousness the consciousness that rides with us all so that we rec- don't require anybody else mm. of course to to know and to understand the divines within us but to to us uh, to be a facilitator myself to be a facilitator to, to engage ignite and connect human beings to their true purpose in life. I'd I'd love everybody that I speak to, to know themselves so that they know where they're going in their life. So they can be absolutely valuable in this journey, in this accrual of knowledge journey with our celestial being and be able to kind of share it in the ether with everybody else. So I I hope um, that I can ignite other people to ensure I'm a strong believer of that, that I'm not going to be here. I'm a man of one breath. Um, it's in the Gurbani as well. And this is where it comes from. So I, I live under the pretense that hopefully every time I speak to somebody that I give a completion to the conversation and I give more than what's expected. So I'd love it, love to be remembered to be somebody who ignited people um, for their greatness, for their best, for their strategic best, and also balance them inside for home life and work life. But, somebody who actually gave more than what was required. Wow. What a legacy. I, 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 it's, a, it's a burning desire to continue. I'm nowhere near it. Um, I'm hoping part of it is, is uh, assimilated and achieved through yourself, Manjeet, who's a mentee of mine and many of the people that work with. But do you know what? Every single day, we, we're not there. You know, it's just a journey. We're getting somewhere. And we need to add to it. So thank you very much for asking that deep question. No, well, thank you for being so open and honest uh, with myself and for everybody who's watching. I'm sure there's so many nuggets that they've taken away, you know, your legacy, your, um, you know, your business acumen, your actually at the heart of it, you're a family man. And whoever you come into contact with, it's like they're part of the family. You're bringing them into the family. You know, so it's coming from the heart and the head, not just from the head when you're coming into contact with people. The the way you've shared so willingly with me, and I know you don't open up with everybody, so I'm really appreciative of that. 
So thank you again so much for, for coming on my show and being my very, very, very special first guest. So I really thank you, appreciate Mujie. that. Thank you very much for having me. Um, it was a pleasure and I hope maybe it helps somebody. I just want to share enough, enough of everything, the ether's knowledge, the divine knowledge, not mine, it's not mine, um, that through connecting with yourself, <laughs> through connecting with your audience, that it just helps them move further forward. And I hope something here helps somebody move forward in life. That's the only intention I have. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Thank you very much. Now, for those of you who have been watching this for the last however long it's been going on, nearly an hour, um, hope you've enjoyed it and you've taken stuff away from it. Please do remember to like and subscribe um, to my channel and you'll hear lots more guests coming up. And if you do need to, if you want to, I'm sure you will, find out more about Suki. If you, I'll put the details on, you'll see all of that. But um, for now, it's Suki Wahiwala uh, official. So look up that, you'll find all his content and everything about him. Um, and if you want to get in contact, find and get more inspired by him, then I, he's open to talking to everybody. It doesn't matter where you're from, what your background is, <clears throat> excuse me, and he's happy to talk to you. So I will see you in the next episode when I will have another person who's inspired me to sit here and talk to you. So thank you very much.